Hello, my name is Bizi Wu and I work at the Annie Casey Foundation. It's my pleasure to welcome you to learn more about equitable implementation through the example of evidence to success in Providence as described in the SSIR article, Community Takes the Wheel. The article describes how a new framework, Evidence to Success, gave the Children and Youth Cabinet a roadmap to put equity at the center of its work with young people. I'm joined by two of the article's co-authors, Winsome Stone and Matt Billings, who will introduce themselves. Winsome? Hello, my name is Winsome Stone, and I am currently the Assistant Director of the Family Services Division of the Department of Children, Youth, and Families here in Rhode Island. Um, my connection and role to the Evidence Success Initiative has evolved over the past couple of years, and I've participated in almost all the pieces of the project representing the child welfare aspect, but I'm also a community resident and a mother. Well, thanks for joining Winsome and Matt. Hey all, my name is Matt Billings. I'm the Deputy Director at the Children and Youth Cabinet of Rhode Island. I was brought on seven years ago to oversee the implementation of evidence-based programs for the Evidence to Success Initiative. Uh, since then, we've been able to grow our investments to over $2 million annually in those programs that were selected by residents and identified by residents. I also wanna take a minute to uh, acknowledge Rebecca Box, our director and my colleague, who is a co-author uh, in this SSIR piece, but also an integral part of the story. Well, thanks both for taking time to speak with us. Winsome, very briefly, what is Evidence to Success and what is it designed to do? Um, yes, Evidence Success, Success is an initiative through the Anna E. Casey uh, organization that uses evidence-based programming to enhance child well-being by addressing such things as school absences and children mental health. Um, of most importance is that the improvements that are needed um, are decided on by the residents of the community, as well as what programs that need are chosen. Thank you. And Matt, given the goals of evidence to success that Winsome has just described, what core elements of equitable implementation help put this framework into action? First is a really great data set. And in Providence, we use the Youth Experiences Survey, which looks at risk and protection and the needs of children and youth through their own eyes. Um, so that is an incredibly robust and exciting data set that we've gone back to on an ongoing basis. Community engagement, obviously, an authentic community engagement is a top level priority. And that ongoing as well could take the, could take the shape of uh, you know, community meetings. It could take the shape of design meetings. We had a mobile voting boost to help set priorities within the community as well. Another piece is we have to track our investments. We have to be accountable to where our money goes. And is that driving and continuing the work that the residents laid out for us from the onset? The last piece is just good continuous quality improvement. Our implementation teams are a cornerstone of our work. Our residents uh, are engaged and participate in the ongoing, you know, in the ongoing continuous quality improvement here. Uh, and so that piece is really an engine that continues to, dr to drive implementation and lift up equity within the work in Providence. Winsome, what did trusting relationships look like on the ground from your perspective? And what were the benefits that you saw? So as a community resident and parent, um, professionals often come into communities uh, with the idea of helping, but not really addressing what the community really needs. Um, a trusting relationship to me has to do with being true to your word and following through on your actions and especially learning how to communicate with the residents of that community. Um, this, it, it, to me, it builds the trust between the community and the organization and it gets things done and makes the community a lot more effective. And Matt, what were some benefits from your perspective? The biggest benefit is re-engineering the idea of expertise in Providence. And our residents are the ones with the deep lived experience, and they're also the ones uh, with that evidence and expertise. And so we, we, you know, we've rethought and we rethink, and part of that is the transition of decision-making. Who are the experts in our community in continuing that work? The second piece is design. So often our families walk into experiences, whether it's program or school, or you know, they, they just don't feel like anything is truly designed for them. And when we really think from, you know, through that equity lens and our implementation looks right, 
they walk into a space that clearly is designed based on their experiences, their interests, and is extremely engaging. And when we start to do that work that I've talked about in those two steps, our results look different, right? Our, our outcomes are better, our engagement is higher, our results just look different than they typically do. And that's, that's very exciting. It could be a change in anxiety and depression, but it's also a change in, in how people feel about a community and the welcoming nature of a community and the resources within a community as well. Well, I'd like to open this up to both of you to talk about challenges to equitable implementation in Providence and specifically building trusting relationships. I think we all know this isn't easy and it involves a lot of learning as you go. What challenges did you encounter and how did you manage them? For me, the challenge was um, getting the child welfare system to look outside the norm of how we deliver services to families. Um, is specifically getting them to understand that not all programs work for all families and that there are culturally specific issues that can only be addressed by programming designed for people of color um, that will address those issues. Most importantly as well is convincing them that um, investing in these programs is going to be a benefit not only to our agency but you know as well to the families as well. So. From, from, our, from our perspective, the Children and Youth Cabinet early on just wasn't designed right to deliver on the needs and priorities of residents. And so for us as an organization, uh, and it's outlined in the article, it's we are on an extensive journey to reimagine what we look like and what our experience is internally. So we have our internal staff um, that is under you know constant construction in terms of abilities and skills and backgrounds and then also our facilitation teams to deliver programs. So we really want our residents, whether they're a clinician or a facilitator from the community to have that shared lived experience of the families who are entering the space with them as well too. So it's been an internal challenge and process for us uh, as an organization and we are definitely on the road and, and we've made some big changes which are exciting, but it's also the constant refining of our workforce as well. Our entire workforce are from the community there, are facilitators and clinicians of color across the board. That experience and background is critical to us. And, and that's, that's a huge growth place for us as an organization uh, and as a team as well. Well, we've come to the last question in this brief conversation. If you could give one piece of advice to a community that wanted to do something similar, what would that be? Winsome, why don't you go first? To be authentic and be opening, open to listening to the residents of the community because they are the experts of what will work and won't work. And Matt, what's your advice? Do what you say you're going to do, right? We've taken enough uh, and really we can't go in one more time and default on another promise. And so if we go in and we, and we do what we say we're going to do and we really authentically change the decision making and authority and power within that community and hand major decisions over to residents. Uh, it's in the best hands possible and that's the ticket to sustainability and, and that's the work right there. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to join in this great conversation.